Hello everyone, welcome and thanks for joining me today here in the Bourbon Bar. Today I'm going to be reviewing uh, Blade and Bow, a former Stitzel Weller product. It's now owned by Diageo and they are producing it with old Stitzel Weller uh, bourbon as well as a couple other sourced whiskeys. That's kind of how Diageo rolls. They just are kind of masters at blending. Um, anyways, it does still kind of pay a little respects and kind of uh, is a tribute to the old Stitzel Weller products. Um, in fact, this little key here on the side, I'll throw a little picture up. Uh, mine is the key number four. And they tribute the keys to the five keys that used to hang off of the doors of the Stitzel Weller distillery. Um, the five keys represent uh, grains, yeast, distillation, fermentation, and aging. So, it was kind of something a little cool there, and then um, obviously Stitzel Weller was known for making some really, really badass bourbon. Um, anyways, this one here is a 90 point or 91 proof bourbon, um, no age statement, and pretty inexpensive. I believe I paid 35 bucks for it, and it's available pretty readily at my Jewel Osco. I see it at Meyer. I see it at just about any liquor store I go to. And uh, yeah, not really hard to find. And like I said, not too expensive. So we'll get into it a little further. The color is a nice, uh, nice light copper. As for the legs, it, uh, it's actually building some really nice ones. For a no H statement product, those look pretty nice. Let's see what I can pull out of the nose. It's pretty mild. I get kind of some notes of honey. A little oak and uh, honey, oak, and ethanol. So it's not super complex, but not having a super deep color, I mean, I can't really expect, I can't expect it to be loaded with flavors when the color is kind of on the lighter side. Oh shit, I spilled some. <laughs> How about that? Daniel Shook, that one's for you. <laughs> I don't even have a towel near me. All right, anyways, let's get back to this and I'll get into a little taster and see what I can get. A little bit lighter on the mouth. Kind of dry, kind of spicy. There's a little notes of like vanilla and honey, but I get that white pepper, I get some oak. I'll go back for some more. There's some more going on. It's surprisingly not. Um, Lacking depth, it's just kind of difficult to detect it all on the first sip. Well, there's kind of a little bit of a note of like peaches. Caramel, vanilla, oak, the pepper is back. Those legs are, those legs are strong. Those are some nice legs. I'd like to know what this was blended with. I mean, I know Diageo is a, like I said, kind of a master of blending, but this is good. Um, as for the mouthfeel, it's not super viscous, not very syrupy and oily. Um, it's kind of a lighter weight, but when it, when it goes down, like I said, you get those notes of peach, a little bit of sweet caramel vanilla, and then oak, white pepper, ethanol. It just kind of changes a little quickly. I would like the sweeter notes to sit a little longer, but it's there to break you in and then it rolls into the other drier, spicier side. I'd also 
say before the dry spicy notes come about, um, there's a little bit of leather. So there's quite a few a few notes that you can detect from this. It's, it's pretty good bourbon, uh, especially for the price point and a no age statement. But it's a pretty good batter. We get into the finish and uh, get to wrapping it up. The finish, a soft bit of heat going down. I didn't mention there's no burn in the mouth, no no warmth in the mouth. And it, in the first two sips, it wasn't apparent, but after I get into my third or fourth, there's a little hug going down. So a little heat, a little sweet, kind of that peachy sweetness, a little caramel, a little vanilla, and then it rolls. Yeah, it's a pretty simple bourbon. And then it rolls back into like the pepper and the spice and the oak. So it's a pretty consistent ride through. Sweet up front to make it soft and easy. And then it rolls into some spicy and dryness. And it's very consistent throughout the ride. Good bourbon. Um, is it my favorite? No, but it's not bad. Not bad by any means. This, this is definitely something you bust out when your friends are over. And I don't mean that to be cheap with my friends, but I mean that more so I can replace this. It's good and I can replace it. And some of my friends um, may think I'm being cheap or stingy sometimes, but that's kind of how I pour. If I decide to pour you something and we cruise through a bottle, can I replace it? The ones that are unicorn status to me, I'm not gonna share that on a Tuesday or any given night. I mean, that's more of like a birthday, a Christmas pour, a Thanksgiving pour, something, or yeah, just something a little more special. That's not my average night pour. This is more of an average night. Hey, you guys are stopping by, let's pour up a few of this. This is really good. No one's gonna be disappointed. No one's gonna say he's giving me bad bourbon and uh, doesn't hurt your pocket and you can replace it. And that's that's something I've I've had to start focusing on a little more because I have a pretty large selection and obviously my friends that know bourbon come and they want the big hitters and hey I want to share them but I also it's not that easy to replace or sometimes they're really expensive so they're not that that I'm not that likely to replace it again or so quickly but this this doesn't hurt my pocketbook let's cruise through it and I'll buy another one tomorrow I'm not worried at all um, anyways cheers friends thanks for joining me and uh, can't wait to see you guys soon. Thanks for all the love and support. Share, comment, subscribe.